Peacocks have always had a very special place in my heart. Not just because they are out of this world gorgeous, but also because they were my grandmother's favorite animal. And my grandmother was one of my best friends. She moved into my parents' house when I was 14 years old, and I got to grow up for some time living with her. So we became like this and created a super special bond. She's also the one who taught me how to bake. Growing up, she'd come visit from Buffalo, New York, and we'd make sugar cookies together and decorate them. And this was just such a highlight for me. I loved it so much, I even called her up and asked her for the recipe so I could make it on my own. And I always credit my love from baking from her. She passed away two years ago at the ripe old age of 92. <laughs> for her 90th birthday party, I made her a peacock cake. It made her so happy and brought so much joy to the event. And it was really my expression of just how much I loved her through this cake. So this peacock cake became a part of my portfolio. And then a year later, a client calls me up and says, I would like a peacock cake. So again, I got to sculpt another peacock. But this time it was going to be a sculpture, not cake of a peacock, sitting on top of three tiers of cake. A little bit of a challenge, some more structural building needed, but no problem, I got this. And this was another chance for me to create this expression of love to my grandmother through cake. And this peacock was for a vow renewal, so the clients were also expressing their love on this day and enjoying this peacock cake. My name's Melissa and I'm an artist. I create cakes, sculptures, and a lot of other cool things. As I mentioned earlier, this peacock is not going to be cake, but the whole outside of it is going to be edible and there'll be cake underneath. But I'll let you see for yourself. Let's make this cake. The first thing I do is cut out all of the feathers from fondant that are going to be adorning the peacock's tail because these need to dry, I need them hardened. I cut each one out from a leaf cutter, thinned it out, added some line detailing for the feather and set them on tinfoil to dry in a nice shape. If you want to see the process of me building this structure, you could check that out on my Patreon linked below. The first step is to build up the shape of the peacock. Right now the tail is just chicken wire, so I need to cover that completely with newspaper and masking tape. And I build up the whole shape of the body, the neck and the head with newspaper and masking tape as well. In the first peacock cake that I made, the whole body was cake. But in this case, they didn't request that. Again, they just wanted the tears underneath to be cake. So we're getting some sculpture in here as well as cake. I painted Mod Podge glue all along that tail so that way the newspaper will harden and create a surface for me to place all of those feathers on later for the tail. I sculpted the peacock's face with modeling chocolate as usual. <laughs> making sure to get every little detail, the creases around his eyes, the front of his beak, the little nostrils on his nose. And I used the back of this veining tool that I had that had created a half circle scallop on it, which I just pressed into that chocolate. It created a beautiful light feather detail. The rest of the feathers on this cake are going to be made from wafer paper, which is an edible paper that's super thin so it can mimic the look of actual feathers. So first I have to paint them all in all the shades of the feathers which includes light green, blue, orange, black, and even white. This is an oil-based pigment that is very vibrant, so it was perfect to get those vibrant colors of the peacock's feathers. Once they're all painted and dry a little bit, they never fully dry with this oil-based color, that's why you see me wearing gloves, I go ahead and I cut out all of the feathers, some from just templates that I trace on and then cut, and some of them I used a circle color that I just punch right into the paper and it cuts out my circle perfectly. Amazing. I use scissors to delicately cut the edges of the feather, creating a light fringe detail, which mimics the effect of actual feathers. And I would say by the end, I cut and made hundreds of feathers. <laughs> And the effect is going to come through so well at the end when I add them onto this peacock. It looks and feels like actual feathers. It's such an amazing and fun technique and it's really not that difficult to create once you figure it out. I hand paint each one of those fondant feathers that I cut out for the peacock's tail. And I'm looking at an exact photo of a peacock tail feather to get the exact colors and shading and shapes as I paint. It starts with that light blue and dark blue in the center, going out into a brown and then a green. And yes, I spend all of that time to paint each one individually, but the effect at the end is going to be uh, jaw dropping. <laughs> I'm also using wafer paper for the backing of the tail feathers, all that fringe at the end, I'm using a large piece and I'm gonna cut tons of fringes into it with scissors to mimic that effect of layers and layers of feathers. I steam each feather before I place it onto the sculpture and that gives it a little bit of shape. So each one doesn't look exactly the same and they don't feel too flat. 
starting with the back side of the tail that's just completely brown feathers placed underneath and then I work my way to the front of the tail and that's when we start to go in with color tons and tons of color I place some green fringe pieces along the sides of the tail and then I glue each one of those tail feathers onto the surface of the tail <laughs> overlapping each one on top of the other and right away it just started to look so beautiful it got me so excited to complete the rest of this peacock the underbelly of the peacock has that dark green underneath and then it fades out into a blue and then towards the neck that lighter navy blue which is going to fade into the actual painting that i'm going to do on the neck itself so I do that with the feathers and then along the sides of his body we've got the orange feathers, some blue, and then the white ones which I painted those line like details with some oil based color on top of. It's giving me zebra vibes but on a peacock. <laughs> and then on the top of the peacock's back we've got those light lime green feathers. Can you believe just how many colors are on this one animal? Nature is just unbelievable and when you sculpt it you just I feel like you get to appreciate it even more. As an artist, sculpting nature, animals, oh, it's just a dream come true. So once I place on all those feathers, it is time to paint the peacock and bring that face to life. What I love so much about the peacock's face is it's got those blues and greens all around, and then it has those white lines that come out above and below the beak, which creates an amazing contrast against all of that blue and keeps the face from just disappearing into a sea of blue. And of course I had to add on his mohawk as well, which was just floral wire with a little piece of wafer paper on top. And then finally, it was time for the cake. They wanted three flavors. We had red velvet cake with vanilla buttercream, Yum. vanilla cake with chocolate buttercream, yum. and of course chocolate cake with chocolate buttercream. Yummy, yum, Ugh, yum. All delicious and amazing combos, <laughs> if I do say so myself. So I stacked and filled each cake, I gave it a layer of ganache on the outside, and then just white fondant on top. We're going simple here. The peacock is the star of the show. And the scariest part of this cake was actually putting those tears on underneath the peacock. <laughs> but luckily my husband was there to help and he lifted up the peacock very gently so I could stuff that tear in right underneath with some support to hold up that weight of that peacock and let it sit perfectly on its pedestal. And with that, this regal sculpture of a peacock on top of three tiers of cake <laughs> was done. I absolutely loved how this peacock turned out. My favorite part was the tail. I just loved how vibrant it looked and feathery it looked with all those fringes of paper. I felt that the peacock looked super realistic in the way that it was sitting on that top tier and then its tail cascaded down so regally on top of those other tiers. The first peacock I made was a standing peacock and the tail wasn't as in proportion to the body as it would be in real life, I felt this time it was way more proportionate. But I did love sculpting those dinosaur-like feet in the first peacock. <laughs> I will say this was a challenge. I had made a peacock before, so I knew what I was doing, but this was a massive structure and sculpture. It took a lot of time, a lot of planning, and I was really, really proud of it in the end. To add to the stress, it was raining when it was time to deliver it, and this cake did not fit in a box, so we had to hold umbrellas over it as we carried it into the hotel it was going to and it was a whole to do, but it made it there safely and they absolutely loved it. Do you think I should make another peacock cake or do you have another animal in mind that you think I should sculpt? Comment below, I'd love to hear. If you enjoyed watching me create this peacock cake, please give this video a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe for so many more cool videos to come. You can see the whole process of me creating this cake, including the structure, on my Patreon linked below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.